Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of the Urban Retrospect. Uh, we got a good show today. We got on. We got on another uh, TSU alum. Before yep. we get to him, uh, before we get to him, real quick, I want uh, the fellas introduce yourselves real quick. Big G, tell them about you. Uh, Greg Jones. Um, I went to the um, a real black college um, down in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's called Kentucky State University. I don't know if you heard of it, but uh, I haven't. We've been around for a long it's time. Blackish. It's blackish. It's not black. It's blackish. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. right, what's up? We're uh, I'm your boy three. You know what I mean? Went down to TSU. Frankfurt is up, but you know they don't teach geography in Kentucky. So, Kyle Paul, hey. go dogs. It's your boy Simply P back in the building in Panama City, representing Tennessee State University by way of Brownsville, Tennessee. Bye. West, Big West, let's get it. Scott Jones. This is Scott Jones representing Nashville, Tennessee, graduate of Indiana State University and a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Yo, baby. Left that part. And we made it through everybody else and ain't nobody mentioned this. <laughs> go to Cappies. Man. <laughs> hey, tell them about yourself, kid. Tell them who you are. Man. Man. And finally, man, I'm Ken Cloud uh, out of Cleveland, Ohio, also a graduate of the illustrious Tennessee State University. And um, I don't need to throw my other stuff up, man. You know what I'm saying? To make me feel good. The rest of these guys just felt a little bit lower by my presence. So, um, you know, uh, I, before we get actually into the interview, Scott Jones, tell them where they can find us. Well, right here where you are, YouTube. And if you like what you're watching, please hit the like and that subscribe button so you can watch future shows. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, as well as TikTok at the Urban Retrospect. We're also on Twitter at Retrospect1619. If you want us to review your product, highlight your product, if you have any questions, shoot us an email at the urban retrospect at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to catch everything, go to the urban retrospect.com. Let's go. Man, there we go. There we go. All, All right. right organize in the house GOP. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never lied. Oh, uh -oh. so everybody, as I said, today's guest is also a graduate of TTTSSSU, the best. Uh, HBCU in the land, Tennessee State University. Um, he uh, was also a hooper. He was a hey. baller. We talk about somebody who averaged 25 points per game in hey. high school and was voted one of the top ballers in LA up there with B. Diddy. We got a question about that coming up a little bit later too. Um, he currently is a private chef and caterer and the owner of Thunderbolt Cookies, the product that we uh, are actually going over and we ordered. Uh, they're pretty good. I had to stop eating it because this was getting a little tight. So, you know what I'm saying? And we'll we'll jump into all of that. But welcome everybody to one and only Mr. Darnay Thomas. How you doing? Thanks for coming hey. on. Yes, sir. What, 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 Blessings, what, what, my brother. Blessings. Happy New Year, man. Happy 2023. You feel me? Yeah, happy yes, New sir. Year. Yes. For sure, for sure, man. So, D, I want to, um, you know, again, say thank you for taking the time to be on the show, man. We are going to ask you some silly questions and some serious questions, but most of all, we're going to have fun. This is going to be straight court villa TSU style. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how this is going. Hey, all right? Hey, what you doing right hey, there? You talking, you talking real grimy. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's how yeah. we do, man. So that's a this and that right there, kid. Man, ain't it no order, no order. We we coming. I might throw in a yeah. bonus. Yeah. So uh, so look, man. The first one is uh, let's start with how I came to know you and where I met you. As we just said, Tennessee State University. How did yes, you sir. go from? How did you go from a kid growing up in LA hooping and then come all the way over to Nashville? How you? How, how what was that journey? Um, man, kind of crazy, bro. What 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 really ha- happened? Um, to be quite honest with you, was um, I had some offers to different places, man, but I didn't really have the right grades to get in where I wanted to go. Um, and TSU came on kind of late. Uh, mm-hmm. to to be honest, I had a coach that I had played AAU ball with that actually was an assistant coach down there and uh you know just through conversation with him and him trying to figure out what i was going to do um he, he threw the he threw the opportunity on the table to come down there and check that out and um honestly growing up i'd always wanted to go to an hbcu but i didn't know of any that were division one um or at least i hadn't done the research to find out which ones were division one and not just division one but in a, in a conference that was respectable so um, for me, TSU was dope because it was an HBCU that played in a predominantly white conference as opposed right. to playing in like the MEAC or SWAC or, right. uh, you know, no disrespect to any of those conferences, but just being on a different um, a different viewpoint as far as, uh, you know, if you got aspirations of going to the NBA, uh, it's a much bigger leap going from one of the predominantly black conferences than going from something where it's like a, you know, a, a white conference, a mid-major um, you know, somewhere where there's more than just predominantly black schools in that conference. So you're going to get a different look as far as uh, the opportunities to take yourself to the next level. So that was one of the main reasons that I ended up coming to TSU, man, is because it kind of checked off the boxes um, for me to be able to go to an HBCU to play D1 ball in a planet conference that was not um, – considered like just kind of like a lower level as we kind of see now as um you know the light has been shined on hbcu football more or less uh than necessarily basketball but even with the football you know um you know there was a lot of people wondering why Dion decided to go take an hbcu job and then what he's done so far and turning that whole program around lets you know how much talent um is really at these hbcus that a lot of people don't get a chance to see Right, right. Mm-hmm. I, got right. I got a follow-up question on that. So, you know how Dion pulled Travis Hunter, right? Yeah. He pulled him because they did a recruiting trip during Jackson State homecoming. Absolutely. <laughs> so, did she have a recruiting trip during TSU homecoming? I didn't, bro. To be honest with you, I didn't even realize kind of what I was getting myself into going to TSU. <laughs> my recruiter, a uh, cat named George Parker out of Memphis, uh, my guy, we called him GP. Uh, one thing that stood out to me when he was recruiting me, bro, was, and, and I'm sure y'all can attest to it, that went to state, he was like, bro, it's like 30 to one down here. Man, I was wondering if you was keeping me uh, <laughs> I, 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 man, I had never heard, I had never heard no odds like that in my life, bro. You know <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't need a whole lot of recruiting, bro. I just needed, you know, to know that, you know, my situation was going to be cool. And outside of that, man, I, I pretty much just packed up and came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. All right. For those people that are listening, by the way, what he's saying is 100% legit. Let's look at people like John Morant, who went to Murray State. You know what I mean? Uh, a couple other guys went to Saluki, those small mid major schools. That's what you got to do, man. Don't Absolutely. always do Everybody got to yeah. go. Don't forget, we got to do Robert Covington. Robert Covington. Covington. You know what I mean? Yeah. But even, yeah. the, even the older, you know, some of the older cats, you know, you got, Carlos. you know, Carlos. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. 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 R.I.P. Anthony Mason. Even yes, though it's sir. in that Biggie song. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Good. Who's next? Right, cool. So let me ask you this, man. So how do you become a D1 athlete from college to a chef? Um, you know, I, 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 I'll be honest, man, I, I've always had a passion for cooking. Uh, I, I grew up in a family that did a lot of cooking. I'm sure y'all might have grown up in the same type of households where, you know, uh, pops get down, moms get down. Uh, you go to your grandparents' house, they cooking, you know, so I feel like I, I got it honest, but I never really tapped into um, 
you know, trying to really go that route. I will say, though, tying in the TSU link, um, and this and this is crazy, man. Like, y'all remember when everybody started getting them stamps around the campus, right? Mm-hmm. So that's really when a lot of my cooking started to kick off because I didn't have to go to the to the calf no more or to, you know, the, 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 the student center to get nothing to eat. I could basically, you know, get some stamps from the homie or if the homie want to go to the store or whatever, um, since I had wheels. We go over to Kroger, man, and just snatch up a bunch of stuff and throw it in the crib. And then we just start cooking at the house, you know, yep. and none of my roommates really cook too much. So they kind of looked at me to just go ahead and do what I was going to do, whatever I want to make. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it kind of started from making, you know, bags of voila, bro, and just throwing some 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 garlic bread with it and feeling like that was a, a you know, a four star dinner compared to, to <laughs> Denny's. I mean, at the uh, Wendy's, you know, uh, dollar menu at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Amico and getting the chicken fingers. So, yeah. you know, we just like, you know, we just started doing that, man. And then, you know, as I as I kept cooking and kept doing stuff for different people, um, I had an opportunity, man, a few years later down the road um, to take myself to culinary school. I had been working, doing my thing in the, in the corporate world for like, I think I had been working for like seven, eight years, man, doing sales. And, um, at the, I think it was 2009, 2010, I got laid off, uh, through that little, that little bubble with everybody else where it was, um, downsizing all the companies and all that. And so they gave me severance pay for like six months. So I didn't have to worry about really getting a job. So I said, well, sh- this is the best time for me to, if I'm going to go to school, to go do it now. So I ended up going to the, uh, to the art Institute in Nashville. And, uh, I stayed there for about, about a year. Uh, and then I had to drop out cause that was just busting my pockets. It's like 25,000 a year to go to culinary school. If you're going to the art Institute, um, being back at home, they, we actually got like trade schools. You can go to where it's way less. It's like, you know, a few hundred dollars a semester for you to go. But, um, uh, being out there, I had to just take what I could get. So I ended up going to the culinary art Institute out there learning my fundamentals and some of the basics. And then, uh, man, I ended up moving back home about a year later and I dibbled and dabbled in a couple things out here, tried to get a few dollars the way I could. And, uh, I ended up just saying, fuck it, man. And just jumping back in full fledged with just, just cooking and just figuring it out from there. Yeah. Basically, it was, right. basically it was a survival thing. I mean, not even necessarily survival. I, I, I always wanted to do it, but it ended up being something where I could actually pursue it at this point. You know what I mean? And then you get to a point of kind of figuring out whether you want to continue to do what you've been doing, you know what I mean? And, and where that path might lead you um, as far as just the regular nine to five stuff, or if you want to just go in and, and, and jump out the window in this dream and, uh, and and see where it take you, you know what I mean? So it, it took a minute for me, man, to just like, you know, really jump out there because that, that stability, man, of being able to go to work every day and no matter what type of performance you give, you're going to get paid in two weeks, you know what I mean? And have them benefits and all that other stuff that you can, you know, you can rely on versus just saying, man, I'm a, I'm gonna figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, fortunately, fortunately for me, I was blessed enough to be able to come back home, um, have a setup where, you know, my, my, my people had me, uh, where I didn't have to worry about rent for a while and, you know, getting myself, you know, back on my feet like that. And I could just really concentrate on just trying to build and, uh, and start something from scratch. So that's pretty much how that, how that took off. That's what's up. So opportunity led to passion and what God got for you can't nobody else get but you anyway. I'm going to say a closed door, there you go. A closed door led to it. You know what I mean? Because yep. sometimes we don't realize, man, like, you know, when you get fired or let go, you know, that's, that's one of the worst feelings in the world, bro. You like, man, what, what am there. I supposed to be doing now? You know, especially if you had a gig where you was actually making some chips, you know, it's like you, you the next thing you're trying to figure out is how do I duplicate what I just had? And a lot of times that's not, you know, really easy to do. So for me, it was an opportunity to say, all right, well, we've been able to kind of put a little nest egg up. How we gonna how we gonna make this time work now, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's that's what that's what happened with that. So you crushed my question. I was gonna say how long you been chefing? So I guess since two thousand and nine, pretty much off and on. Uh, I, I I say since about really since about two thousand twelve, because I kept trying to kind of you know still stay in the nine to five situation. Like I said, I wasn't fully committed to it. I was still trying to stay on the on the stable path, the path that kind of like my family had raised me to be on versus the entrepreneurial path where it's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta take some chance. You gotta take some risk. You gotta put yourself out there and, uh, and roll the dice on a lot of situations. Mm-hmm. So, so are you a private chef? Yeah. 
Okay. Nice. So explain me the in and outs of a private chef. Oh man, the in and outs of a private chef, man, is, is pretty much somebody that is um you don't need, honestly, I was gonna say either formally or not formally trained because there's a lot of uh you know cats out here, man, that's that's not formally trained, but they really do their thing. They've been you know in restaurants for a number of years, started out young, et cetera, et cetera. But um honestly, it's just you providing services, man, directly to the people. You know, you don't work in a restaurant per se, nobody can necessarily pull up on you um and grab something to eat um but you available especially in the space that we have now where you got social media to do your marketing um you know you got people that do parties that do events you know connecting and building uh networks with them so that when they have different things you know and they need food catered that your name is one of the first things that comes up on the list um and just pretty much man providing any food services that you can until you build yourself up to the point where you can start putting the business together the way you actually want to operate versus the way you have to operate, which is sometimes, <laughs> you know, the difference from the startup to where you are four or five years later. You know what I mean? I know when I first started, I was doing any and everything, man. So if that was a birthday party, uh, a kid's party, a bar mitzvah, it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? If, if food was needed, I was trying to be the person that they called. You know what I mean? And that's still true today, but I have a little bit more, um, I, I got a little bit more selectiveness now in the in the things that I do and the jobs that I take and the events that I work, you know. So that's just coming from, you know, basically, like I said, doing a a family get together to now being able to do, you know, entertainer parties, you know. So it's been that type of uh, start start from nothing to what what I have developed at this point now. Right. La la you better not turn that money down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you be like you be you be surprised though. You be surprised though, man. Like they said, all money ain't good money. Yeah. You know, you also got to be conscious of the fact that you know, um, as a as a private chef, man, you you count on you count on a lot of other people to be honest with you to pull off certain things. Um, you know, I'm only one person, so it's only so much that I can do by myself. Um, so you have to have a team with you that's. Um, capable of keeping up with what you do and hopefully making you better at what you do so that you can take on, you know, different things of, 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 of that type of, uh, nature, bigger size gigs and, you know, things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just, um, necessarily going and cooking at someone's home, but at the same time, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it, man. That's, that's pretty much what a private chef does. Do you have a sous chef or have you, or is that too far away or, how does that no, work? it's 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 really more so, and I and I think I'm probably like a lot of private chefs and dudes that kind of you know get out here and get it out the mud, so to speak. They got you know a team of people that they just rock with. So fortunately for me, one of my best friends is also a chef. You know what I mean? So we collaborate on a lot of stuff. If it's something that I feel like um, I need to bring him in on, I try to make sure that like even when I'm excuse me scheduling out the date of the event and whether I'm available to be able to take it. Sometimes it's based upon whether I can get him to come or not you know what i mean because if it's let's say you know an event they got 100 people that they're trying to feed and they're doing xyz as far as the courses i may need two or three people to come help me to be able to actually execute the deal because if i can't get those two or three people to help me i probably need to turn that deal down versus me trying to figure out how to do it by myself and it okay. turned out not to be a good thing you know what i mean so i'd rather turn down money sometimes then necessarily take it if I know logistically I can't pull it off. So I, I assume your sales background kind of comes in handy when you was talking about like the marketing, you know, how to approach people to kind of get your clients and stuff like that. Absolutely, man. Because being a personal chef, the first thing is being personal. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. the food, all of that does come into play um, as far as a big piece of it, but it's being able to just be personable with people, man. People gravitate to you first and then your product second. You know what I mean? And that's just really how I look at it. And that comes from my sales background. I feel like in sales, people buy from people they like, you know? And so your introduction, how you come across to that person you're trying to sell to is a lot more important to me initially than what it is you're trying to sell to them. The boy, use that line. So I want y'all to know because that just came out way too easy. It just came out too easy. That kind of leads me into to my question. Um, well, I guess twofold. Number one, you were talking about you know larger size events. 
Yeah. Now, what, what would you say when it comes to catering? What would be the largest catering event that you've done? Uh, to date, about 150 people. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ain't bad. But I'll be honest with you, man. I do I do events all the time. There's roughly 40 to 50 people at an event. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's um that's the beauty of kind of the lane that I'm in. A lot of people be like, are "You gonna open up a restaurant? Do you want to you know start your own thing?" And I mean, maybe at some point I might. But to be honest with you, this is this the bag lane, man. If you can build up your catering business, yes, sir. you got clients on a consistent. The amount of things that they have is consisted of a lot of people generally. Mm -hmm. So if you charge it per person, you're going to come out way better on that end than you are if you're charging, you know, per plate type situation. Mm -hmm. It's less. You don't have to pay for a brick and mortar. Absolutely. Overhead, um, Overhead. all that right. good stuff. And it's, and it's changed, though. You know, you got, yeah. you got what they call ghost kitchens now, which yeah. are really popular. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are a lot less expensive allow you to do multiple businesses out of one kitchen, you know? Right. So if you go on Uber Eats or you go on um, DoorDash, any of that stuff, you might see restaurants on there that you've never heard of. And a lot of times that's a private chef. That's an individual that's got a ghost kitchen or sharing a commercial kitchen with someone. And mm -hmm. they've started multiple businesses out of that kitchen that you look at and think are different restaurants, but it's actually the same person just selling different items. Mm -hmm. okay. Hey, D. D, what was on that? What was on that menu for the 150 people? Oh yeah, I mean I've had various menus for those, but I mean they go from, you know, lamb chops, steaks, lobster tails, nice. uh, you know, to folks that just are, you know, uh, down home folks that just want barbecue, you know, ribs, barbecue yeah. chicken, you know, mac Dinner. and cheese. The, we're not really, I haven't had that offer yet, and I'm probably gonna turn it down as soon as they ask. Um, <laughs> you said down home, folks. I'm just wanting to make sure. Hey, yeah. that's 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 way down home. You know what I mean? They're not gonna say Chitlins out out in California. That's the wrong LA. You talk about low Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that hey. hey, dude, that leads to my question. You already stated. Hey, but, but listen, but listen, don't get it twisted. All my folks, all my folks is from the South. So my, my grandparents on my mom's side, they're from Bernice, Louisiana. If y'all yeah. never heard of it, it's cool. If you have, much love, because nobody yeah. knows where that is, but people that are from there. Um, but my, my grandmother on my on my pop side, she's from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, you know, I got, I got nothing but Southern roots, really, that I come from, which is... Uh, Honestly, this is reflected in my cooking as well. So when people do ask me for soul food or for Sunday dinner type stuff, they're shocked by what they get because they're not expecting that to come from me. Even though I'm a brother, me being a younger brother and being more from the, the modern era of cooking, they don't expect me to get down the way that I get down. Exactly. But that's where all of that stuff comes from. So all the other things that I do is sort of the stuff that I learned from being able to go to school and actually figure out you know, actually what I was doing and the techniques and the, the verbiage and, you know, all the classical things that you learn in school that you don't really get taught when you're just watching grandma do what she do. Okay. Yeah, that leads to my question, man. What, so, so, you know, you come to TSU. Yeah. You know, we, we all family. So, so you, you already stated that, that you have a lot of people in your family that cook, that are chefs. So my question is, how much of your cooking do you include uh, the Southern style? Since so you came to TSU, I know you adapted some of our, uh, Cooking and some are slain. But how much of the, uh, how much of that uh, you include in your menu, your um, your cooking style, the southern food? Uh, I I think it's probably it's probably about forty percent of what I do, man. Like um, but everything I do is based on the client. To be honest with you, um, I don't I don't have a a catering menu that I give out that's just kind of static and has all this different stuff on it. I like to build my menu based on what you want. You know, and then from there, if it's something that I've never made before or something that I have to uh, figure out what to do, that's where the schooling comes in. At. That's where the training comes in at, because they give you the foundation of being able to take any pretty much recipe, any uh, cultural you know, dish and be able to make it based on what the instructions are that 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 it takes to make the dish. Now, if you can um, locate the items as far as particular things that may be uh, specific to that uh nationalities culture as far as spices and different things like that um but if not you know you do what you can to recreate that in your own way most chefs man if you ask them um 
the best thing about what they do is being able to take something that everybody is used to and putting their own spin on it. Oh, yeah. Like a bartender. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because you're going to get taught a certain way to make something. Yep. But all of us that's on here right now, give you a give you a prime example. If we all went to culinary school at the same time. Right. And this is something that I realized when I was there. We all gonna make the exact same dish. Right. They can give us the exact same recipe, exact same ingredients, all that. Right. We're going to all make the same exact dish. Mm -hmm. But each one of our dishes is going to taste a little bit different. Yeah. You know why that is? It's because basically, even though we all got the same ingredients and we all got the same measurements and all that. You might put just a little bit more salt on yours. Kim might put just a little bit more pepper on his. You know, I might use maybe a little bit less butter in mine. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, depending on how our palate is or the person that is the chef, depending on how their palate is, when you take that plate up there, she might like yours more than she like mine, but we use the exact same stuff. Mm. See, CP, what he's saying is for Brownsville, they make poke salad. For the Asians, <laughs> they got the bok choy. And then for us, they got the collard greens. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want no salad, though. But they all the same. You they all, no they all the process of making them is all the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, even though salad, culturally though. We, we, we come from different backgrounds, yeah. box choy, like you said, you know, cabbage, kale, whatever, it's all cooked the same, man. You know what I mean? They, they do that with uh, dumplings. Every culture has like their own. Don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. and it's, 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 it's super similar, man, to, to how we are, like I say, by family, you know, even though all black folks are black folks, by family, we do stuff a little bit different, you know. Yeah. So your mom's yeah, might, you know, a poke salad, you know, bake her yams. Yeah, my mom might boil hers. You know what I'm saying? But we still getting yams on that Sunday. Yeah. You know, poke salad <laughs> grows outside of outhouses in the country. That's not the only place it grows. It's not that's collard where, greens. That's where it grows. In it ain't collard greens. <laughs> well, I got a quick question for you. Yeah. Do you do you prefer cooking or baking? And um, in each one of them, what's your specialty? Uh, cooking, bro. Because I didn't go to school for baking. To be honest yeah. with you, uh, not to not to jump ahead, but the the cookie stuff came out of a a love for eating cookies. To be honest with you, bro. Uh, yeah. my aunt used to make me dough. And send it back with me when I would come home from school. So okay. I bring it back to the crib and I just bake them up and I just eat them, whatever. And it got to a point where I couldn't keep waiting on her to send me dough. So I just asked her what, you know, what the recipe was to make the cookie dough. And she busted my bubble, so to speak, and told me it was the recipe on the back of a bag of the uh the toll house uh chocolate chips. So yeah. that same recipe that's on the back of that bag is what she was making me the whole time. I just didn't know. Okay. So once she told me that, I was like, okay, well, hell, I got a you know college degree. I think I can figure out how to do this myself at this point. You know, <laughs> don't, don't seem too complicated if I just go buy all the stuff. <laughs> so right. that pretty much was like the kickoff of it, man. And I started making up my own little joints and uh, people would come by my house and, you know, I just offer it to them or whatnot. And, you know, after a while, folks, I said, man, you need, you need to really look at, you know, possibly start selling this stuff. I wasn't really tripping on it, but it was like, well, so many people keep saying that I might as well just start start doing it, you know. So lo and behold, the hustle kicked off and man, we've been doing it ever since. There you go. Flat out. Flat out. That's how it is. Right. So so what's your favorite, not necessarily your best dish or cookie? What's your favorite one to prepare? Cookie or dish? Your go-to. Uh you, you're trying to put that fake and bake on them. And yeah, you know what I mean. Right. I'll be I, I'll be honest, man. I'll, I'll say what's most requested from me, um, and this is for people that have actually had it before, is my shrimp and grits. Okay, Ooh. that's probably the most requested item for me as far as food. Um, I don't I don't know why. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, I mean I know what I do with it, but I don't I don't think that it's something that you've never had before. But I think the way that I combine the ingredients. Cause I'm also, I like to put food together, man, based on how I think it should taste good. You know what I'm saying? So I might combine stuff, for instance, with my shrimp and grits. I feel like there's multiple ways you can have it. I don't do the kind where you have a bunch of sauce all over your stuff. You know what I mean? I more so want you to taste the grits. I want you to taste the shrimp, but I also add like um, chicken, apple sausage to mine, diced up chicken, apple sausage to mine. Um, I might throw bacon bits on top of it, green onions. Mm -hmm. um, just so it's it's more so a full dish as opposed to what you just kind of see with most people 
or is this is shrimp and grits and a bunch of sauce poured on top? That dang um, baking wise, wise though, bro. Baking wise, I probably say, I, I honestly I don't have a favorite cookie baking wise, um, because for me, even the cookies that are on my menu, I cut that all the way down. My original menu, bro, had probably about twenty something cookies on it, um, because cookies is something that honestly every individual can create their own cookie. So all of us on here right now could basically create a different cookie than any of us would have thought of to make just based on our own preferences and on, you know, our things that we would like to have in there. And sometimes I ask people that, like, if you could have a perfect cookie, what would it be? What would be in it? You know, because my ideal... white chocolate macadamia, let's Boy. start yeah. right there. Like, Boy. that's, hey, that's, <laughs> hey, big G. that's the joint. Hey man, listen, I gotta stay away from that. My bad, I got excited. That was the fat boy that came out. Hey, hey but home. you know what, kid? That's the that's the reaction I get from people. So so honestly, bro, that, that was part of why I the hustle kicked off because those were the honest reactions I would get from people from just messing around, throwing stuff together. I don't even know where I came up with that cookie from, bro. Just it just sounded good to me, you know what I'm saying? So I put it together and boom, I put it out and see what people feel about it. And and most people was like, yo, that's a that's a winner. You know what I mean? So I'm like, OK, well, let me figure out what else I can do with this. And I noticed that once I figured out how to basically master the, the base dough that I was making, you could throw anything in there, bro. Mm -hmm. Any ingredients you want to mix in there from that point, it's going to be up to your preference. So that's why I say as far as what I do, it's almost like the bigger goal of it is to be able to provide something where. I don't know in each state that you guys are in, if there's a, a particular cookie company that everybody kind of like fucks with or whatnot. I know out here on the West Coast, it was like Miss Fields was one of the, the major cookie co companies out here. I don't know if you all heard of that. Yeah. Uh, I know when I was in Nashville, I think it was Chris, Christy Cookies was the joint that was in the mall mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, my long term goal of it was to be able to have a spot where people would come in. You'd already have house cookies which are the cookies i i came up with myself you'd have cookies you can create on your own like i said by basically taking the, the base dough and then throwing whatever ingredients you want to put in there or you have the ability to create the dough yourself or whatever you want in there and then take it home and bake it kind of like the little pizza spot that we used to have out there where you come make it yourself and then take it home and bake it so that was a long-term idea of the whole cookie business in itself i'm scott jones we snatching that. This is on the Urban Retrospect. We on the rights to everything said on the show. That's <laughs> us right there. You know what I mean? Let's get that. In, let's get that up. We're gonna get a little ghost kitchen, uh, the cookie cooking company, the Urban Retrospect. That yeah, makes I me think, hungry. Man, I take that a step further because the question that I had was in regards to uh to if you had any goals of opening up a restaurant, but you you already answered that. By saying mm -hmm. yeah. you don't really need to considering what you're doing, but right. with what you're saying with this dough, mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you if you could send me some dough, and then I'll cook it here. Kill it here. <laughs> that's the, no, no what? facts, though, bro. No, no, that's the that's the that's the play, man. That I really I haven't figured it out you know yet. Where the op, you know and, where the opportunity is. Yeah, and, and we saying it right here on the Urban Retrospect. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the only thing. That's the only thing I ain't figured out yet, bro, is how to ship it and make it cost effective for the person on the other end that's buying it. Because with the shipping it, I got to have dry ice and all this other packaging in there to make sure that it gets to you and it's still edible uh, and hasn't hasn't uh, hasn't spoiled or rotted. So that's the that's the only reason that I haven't shipped dough. But I am definitely trying to figure out a cost effective way of doing that, because even with shipping just the cookies, bro, like. That that shit hell expensive. It's it's crazy just trying to ship as a small business out here, bro. Like you gotta yeah. be moving real yeah. units in order for them to give you a deal on shipping. If not, your customers gonna pay half of what they purchasing. They gonna pay half of that in shipping. Well, mm -hmm. see, that goes back to the customer about how bad they really want it. Facts. Yeah. You no. Know, so you know, I'll spend Absolutely. fifty dollars for you to send some dough to me to cook. Absolutely. Out, that's how bad I want it. I do that. I got you. Right. With some juice. From a yeah. company that we brought here on the show, yeah. from Indianapolis, yeah. been doing it once a week for the last two years now. Yeah, so it's really all about you know like we talked about this when we first started doing, it, but just changing folks' habits. You know, we this is right. yeah. what you're offering isn't something that you can just go to the grocery store and just get some cookies that are like this, right? Right. So you right. pay a little bit more more money for the cookies to come to you, right? So mm -hmm. what I was saying with that dough. 
an idea because I get, get tired of always buying the same items from folks when it comes to these fundraisers. And I'm always mm-hmm. like, who, who, are the, who are the people that, that makes this product that we are purchasing for these fundraisers? Um, yeah. So an opportunity would be doing fundraisers with your dough. They could purchase the dough and you get schools, what have you, organizations, and you uh, you know make the dough in bulk. And send it out. Absolutely. We can talk get, about get, it. We can talk them, about it. Get them Neapolitan buckets. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, no, listen, bro. Especially when it was when it was COVID, man, and it was a lot more downtime. Like I I looked into a lot of stuff. I had mocked up some uh some different cups. You know, I had I reached out to a couple companies about their different products as far as the 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 types of cups that I could could use to ship dough in. So I, I basically been trying to put all those pieces together, man, and, and figure it out, especially on that um uh kind of like you know fundraising tip because that's an easy market. But at the same time, that's a market where um uh, like I was talking to y'all earlier about logistics, that's where I would basically figure out how to have a pack out company do yeah. that work as opposed to me trying to uh create dough for a school that got you know, 3000 kids is buying this for a fundraiser or whatnot, but it would have, those are the good problems to have to figure out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you sure just want those you opportunities sure to say, <laughs> okay, y'all want me to do that? All right, cool. I'll get that done. And then let me figure it out on the back end. Like, okay, well, let's, let's figure out how we're going to be able to get all this worked out and we'll, we'll whatever, spend the money, get it all knocked out so that the execution of it looks like, you know, it's supposed to look. So that's that's kind of where we at now, man, is just trying to figure out different ways of leveraging um, other uh, right. resources um, versus sort of the, the grind that I've been doing where it's just, because it's, that's pretty much the beauty of the product. Everything that you're getting, I made. You know what I'm saying? From the cookie dough to the cookies to the packaging, all of that. That's all me, bro. Like, ain't nobody else touched your box but me. You know what I'm wow. saying? But I have to get to a point where that's no longer the case. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Where I oversee what's going on, but that there's a there's a different uh mechanism that's handling all that and getting all that done for me. before you say that three, because I know you 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 will talk I'm about eat this cookie, man. Let's eat this what, cookie. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. Because I didn't get I didn't get to say this earlier. So if if you uh, a slogan, and you gotta hear again from Urban Retrospect, bring in LA to LA. Because you mentioned you're from the South, Louisiana. Yes, sir. Uh, they get some of that Louisiana down home cooking. I wanted to say this earlier, but you jumped in, uh, P, but bringing LA to LA. And then the other thing is, have you ever thought about doing catering for pharmaceutical representatives? That's that's actually what I do. I'm oh, in yeah. sales, medical yeah. sales. Okay. But even pharmaceutical sales. So if you ever have like doctor's offices that you mm-hmm. want to 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 uh, provide lunches for or breakfast yeah. for, um, yeah, I know you are in LA. I do have a couple uh good friends and ex colleagues mm-hmm. that are over there in that area that I can oh, absolutely, her, absolutely nice, love nice. that, bro. Absolutely, so, all about absolutely. right there. So we'll absolutely, bro. But 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 let's talk about these cookies, though. Yeah, yeah. man, let's get into it, man. Let's let's get into it. I need, to, I need to know. I need to know. I know Ken liked the white the the the. Well, that was called amazing crazy, and that was another thing I tried to I tried to come up with some. You know some 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 cool names for the stuff, and uh, I realize still I got to market that a lot better because folks still don't even use the names. They just they just tell me what was in the cookie, and that's what they want me to send. That's, to them that's black people for you, right there. Dog. Yeah, I, I already know, bro. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, hey, you see that you new Denzel movie? Hey, they don't, they don't, they don't care what that mean you say. They just gonna tell me what they thought was in the cookie and tell me send me some more of those. Hey, <laughs> like, Pete, did, did you watch? Did like, you watch that? The they putting together the menu, bro. Like. <laughs> Did you watch that Tommy on Sunday? Exactly. Like, exactly. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. They don't even know what it's called. Yeah, yeah. we didn't say the name, man. And you know exactly who we're talking about, too. Yeah, man. you know what I mean? But I, I, I try to I try to keep the concept of it cool, man. Keep it more um more fresh. You know what I mean? It's 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 a it's a it's more of a kid's love, you know what I'm saying, as far as cookies, but I even adults love it, obviously, because we were kids. Um, but it's 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 I try to keep it kid friendly, but still um still had a swag of, of of the era we came through man you know and i and i give a shout out to uh slim and huskies man because i feel like the yeah. wavelength that they own is the wavelength yeah. that that i was on when when i created this and kind of the concept behind right. it and just trying to merge you know something that's something that's more from our from our 
from a nostalgic time in our life with what we are now and where where things have, have gotten to and how we how we move and you know as, as as far as our generation is concerned man so um question i do have for y'all before y'all jump into the cookies is how do y'all feel about the the actual like the box how it came to y'all how it was presented to y'all uh, because one thing for me is i'm not i feel like i need i need a, i need a lady for this portion of my business because they're really good at making making things look nice and, and cute and you know finding the right materials and and boxes and and all that good stuff you know what i'm saying so everything you saw there was pretty much some some masculine sort of uh packaging <laughs> you know hey, hey, hey hey when you talking to dudes we didn't care. We didn't but care. i'm, I'm sure y'all fellas care. understand man we just got out of christmas i know y'all don't wrap no gifts you know what i'm saying y'all know. y'all know where y'all sent them gifts to get you wrapped already at, know, you, know man. you already know man. <laughs> See, from now on, now you got some homework because you got to go ring that bell and like we talk about the packaging and the shipping experience. You're beating us to it. We're about to give you that right now. You yeah, yeah. Up front. All yeah. right. So I'm going to go first because I'm not going to sit here and wait while y'all keep yeah. talking about these cookies, man. All right. So Thunderbolt cookie. Packaging is very clean and it arrived on time. Uh, it was UPS, uh, United States Postal Service, and uh, it was delicious. And I've been eyeballing this one right here. So I had one of the cookies with chocolate chip already, right? But I, I'm an oatmeal raisin fiend. So okay. I'm going to pull this out. So you're going to jump into that? Yeah, you're going to jump into that Spody Odie? Spody You feel me? It's the government name. Come on, man. The government name. Look, the cellophane is fine. The, the TSU blue and white is good. Uh, we got another pot that we did some cookies a while back. He used like little streamer type thing. But you know what I mean? It's good. The dough, the texture. Let's get into this texture quick. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this does not fall down. apart. You know what I mean? It does not fall apart. When you bring it, 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 it breaks, but it did, you didn't see a single crumb fall, but it's soft, <laughs> it's moist. You know what I mean? He really having a fat kid moment right now. All right. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Joy, enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> Bro, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hey man, this is so real. He he's honest right now, dog. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we, hey, we we've, we've like seen I, this look on his face before, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, I I feel like this, I is, this is the crazy thing about it, fellas. This is the crazy thing about it, right? I made those. When did I tell you I was shipping them off? Can Tuesday? Yeah. So if you really think about it, by the time they got to y'all, they had already been in the box for three days. Nice. Now imagine if you had got those the day I made them. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. See, that's a whole different experience, bro. Yeah, they, Getting them that's, fresh it, out and and, and hand it to you, warm or hot or however you want to do it, or even day of, whole different experience, bro. Wow. So I feel like I'm even cheating the folks that I have to send the cookies out to because y'all not even getting that full that full get out. But when bro Is get his dough, he's gonna be able to explain that a whole lot clearer. Then I'm able to explain it because trust yeah. me, this is different. It's a whole different vibe, bro. Is it is it is it butter to give it that nice crust on the bottom? You know what I mean? Yeah, is yeah, and that butter? parchment paper. And that parchment paper. Oh, huh. Yeah. So, so that, so that again, clean break. Clean, clean break. This <laughs> man, like he had a McDonald's commercial. Ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. He is having, like Wes said, he having a real fat boy moment. Fat boy moment, boy. <laughs> I love it. I love it, bro. That's the that's that honest reaction, bro. Every time. <laughs> Look, man. Somebody so somebody else I got go. I got mine, D. And honestly, I was like, this is not gonna meet with my uh with my goals right now. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. it is 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 not. Because um, I sat there over there, I said, man, you gotta be kidding me, man. And then it's a, it's about to be. You know the new year, uh -huh. and I'm like, oh, dog. I no, I, I ain't even gonna lie. I had, I, I sampled each one. I had to take the rest of them to work and leave them at work today because I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna destroy this box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, it, everything was good. I, I can't beat Three's reaction at all, and I'm not, not even gonna try. Um, <laughs> I, I would, I will say this because you, you know, you just asked. Uh, yeah. about bringing in a lady you're right they are pretty 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you and you know, and when you uh, for anybody out here who's not married, ain't had a long time girl, they they bring some nice stuff into your house, your relationship. Correct. But I mean, it's just a colorful, more beautiful way of looking at life. They just so, get presentation, it. Presentation. You know what I'm saying? They, they get they, it, man. They, they understand. They so um, I would say, yeah, you can bring it in because I I will tell you that, like the the hard you got the hard white box. It looks like a regular cookie box. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's those little pieces of flair that again that these ladies see, mm -hmm. and, you know, just spice up the presentation. I ain't, look, I ain't gonna even lie. I wouldn't look for the flair, bro. But because my brain ain't really zoned in on that, I don't even know what the good flair is to look yeah. for. And then listen, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a, a little bit of game too. So we've looked at like the met the metrics of who watches this show, right? Mm -hmm. It's ladies that watch this show more more than more than men. Really? Right? Mm -hmm. They they have a different way. They got a different level of understanding than a lot of us do. Or they, I would say they. I take the back. They take the time. Mm -hmm. They take the time while we, when we don't. So yeah, I would so say bring some are, bring somebody in to collaborate with on that. Yeah, facts, so. facts. I feel like honestly, I feel like it's it's in it's in a DNA code, man. Like we and just if we do it, if we do it, you're gonna go to party city. <laughs> yeah, but even if we do, even if we do, we asking a young lady that work at Party City yeah. what stuff I need to even pull this off. There you go. Because our brain don't automatically just go to uh you know design and and color scheme and you know, like like Ken said, the 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 bells and whistles that you can add on there to make it look a little bit more jazzier or or festive or whatever. Y'all lucky y'all got the blue and white uh, uh, paper that you got in there because that's where I thought I was being. I thought I was being genius by throwing that in there for my TSU. I, hey, I, I, I went to the dollar kill. store. I went and got y'all blue and white <laughs> tissue paper hey. as opposed to throwing any other oh, colors man. in there that I might have thrown in there before oh, because man. that's how my brain works, bro. Yeah, all right. Yeah. When let they me open this box, let me give my guys a blue and white tissue paper for this. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest university. It's okay with y'all. You know, I like to go next. And the only reason why is if you see over my shoulder here, this right here is the bench that I take all the photos on when they enter my okay. door. Yeah, okay. 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 These cookies came in, they came in the box, nicely packaged, nicely wrapped, and they were sitting right here on this bench. And I said, I said, Ken a mess. I said, hey, can we can we go ahead and eat these? <laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and then even uh my wife was like, uh, okay, so what what are we gonna do about those cookies on that bench? We can we go ahead and eat. Them? I said, let me, let me find out from Ken first if we can do that. So we were able to to bust them out. And I and I actually uh I actually had um tore them cookies up. <laughs> Come on, look. You know what I'm saying? All right. So this I, this this is what you provided us right oh, here. Yeah, yeah, nice, you know, nice, you know. nice. Hey, and, and, so, and don't and, feel and, don't feel bad, fellas. <laughs> don't feel bad at all, man. I've literally watched people tear up half a bag right in front of me, bro, before they even really get to their car. <laughs> yeah. And all right. and I mentioned and I mentioned the missus that that would be that was her only. Her only complaint is what, and it's not necessarily a complaint, but what you said as far as the package. Yes, sir. And just just needing that that female touch. And yes, sir. You had somebody else on here that had that had very nice packaging, and and guess who was in charge of any and everything that had to do with that packaging, and that was yeah. his significant other. Right. So, yes, sir. So, so you hit that right on the nose with that. But now that we we tore those cookies up. I, I was talking to my my wife this morning. I said, "Oh yeah, we we have to record tonight." Uh, what you recording? I said, "The cookies." I said, "What you think?" She said, "Good and gone." <laughs> the G and G. Oh, the G and G. Oh, so, yeah, they, they yeah. came right on time, and you know, we're we're a fan of them. And if there was anything that that um, you know, that small thing would would just be the absolutely. The Absolutely, you much respected. All right, let me go next. Let me go next. So, um, I drove to Cincinnati to pick mine up, <laughs> like a fat boy. You gotta so get his I, had, I had one of my own um, friends come in town. It was, it was this was New Year's Eve, and I got the cookies and I put them in the fridge. And um, 
I, I would go in there and take one and eat it. And we got back that night and I brought a burger back and he was like, he didn't get no food. And he was like, what's in that white box? I was like, what? What's in it? He said, what's in that white box? You know, I saw you eating out of it earlier. I said, oh. <laughs> That boy was sneaking cookies. <laughs> yeah, that, that, so I, I threw him a couple of them. I was mad about it. I was like, ah. <laughs> uh, ain't going to the new year like this. And so I threw him a couple, man. He matched some things. <laughs> but this is what I had to do. I had some um some treats in my refrigerator, some adult treats, and I kind of mixed them in with them. That way he wouldn't mess with them. So I was like, he's like, man, what, 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 what are those cookies like? You know, um, happy, happy <laughs> cookies. He thought, it was, he, he, thought um, he had an Eddie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, nah, 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 I wouldn't do you he like that. He thought he had a box of that Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, packaging was good. I, I thought the packaging was cool, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know. I'm hearing from everybody else. I'm like, yeah, we did get another. Um, we had another cookie guy on here, and he he did have a little bit better packaging, but the, the cookies were. What I enjoyed about them, they wasn't too sweet. They were just right. They were just right. So I For enjoyed sure. that. Yeah, yeah, enjoyed it, and then they were fresh and soft, and like three did. He demonstrated. I didn't demonstrate nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was killing it. I was killing it. Two bites. You know, I actually went on to try to order some because I was going to order some. Um, I was ordering some, and my PayPal wouldn't allow me to. I had an old PayPal. Uh, we'll talk about this later. But I, I'm going to try to order some more last <laughs> night. You know, and we'll talk about this. Go, go okay. ahead and discuss it here you. so we can have an outtake on you. Yeah, because we all know that's what was about to come. <laughs> I'm about to end up in the bloopers reel at the end of the episode. Yeah, no, 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 no. I didn't get on enough blooper reels of it. Hey, hey, did y'all see that boy pause real quick? Like, yeah, nah, I know where this goes. He know you the best up, right? Uh, oh, oh, let me go ahead and go. So, it, the cookies came right on time because you know the boy didn't gained some weight lately. So my new year resolution. <laughs> is to, you know, lose some weight. And so I had this box of cookies and I snuck them down. Cause when they came in, my my folks didn't know what they were. And so I snuck them <laughs> down to my man cave. And for the last two days before <laughs> New Year, I just been snacking on them and they've been pretty good. Now, as far as me, I don't care about the packing, package. Yeah. I'm basic. So this give me the, just give me the uh the food. If they good, they good. I'm good. As long as yeah, I can, yeah. you know, drink them with a bourbon or something, something sweet to compliment. <laughs> Watch some football. Yeah. Train that Georgia loses. <laughs> they had to eat that cookie. To, uh, had to <laughs> have my sorrows after they won, which should have been a targeting. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but they were good, man. I I really like the ones, and I, like I'm just like them black folks you said don't know the name and stuff. So I like the the, the white chocolate with the yeah. um uh, with the cranberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that shit was slamming, and then the shit with the nuts. Hey, it was a chocolate <laughs> with good the Yeah, yeah, that that okay. shit was good too. Okay, yeah, that's that's cold. Cold. okay. I knew P was gonna get weak. I'm sorry. I knew people was going to lose it, man. You, you said that a little bit too hard. Yeah, the man. chocolate chips are pretty good, man. I like this the chocolate chips. The one with the nuts. <laughs> That's <laughs> your liver, man. I don't know the name of it. What you mean, the one with the nuts? You mean these nuts? You mean the one with these nuts? Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> that man. 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 I think we found what's going to be good. All right, so let me go last night, like, dog. So my cookies came early. Ken, like, hey, man, you're going to get them cookies on Tuesday. I got mine on Saturday, maybe even Friday. I don't go to my mail all the time. But, uh, man, open up that white box. Yeah, I opened up that white box. I'm like, hey, I, hey, I'm basic, man. I, hey, I'm, I'm like West. Long, what's inside is good, you know? 
So yeah. just like just like Ken and West, man, we trying to eat right to start the year off right. So yeah. So I was yeah. doing one cookie. I was doing one cookie a day. I got to I got three three in three days, and I enjoyed the cookies, man. So so the fellas know I take my cookies outside of the house because I'm the only one in Panama City. So I take it to a bar or whatever and hand them out. So I took so I'm in the bowling league. So I took it to I took it to the bowling alley and gave it to uh the my fellow white bowlers. Told them what I do, you know, for the, this is black company in uh, L.A. And they don't try the cookies. They love your cookies, bro. They Thanks. really enjoyed your cookies. I appreciate that. You got an that. extra drink from the bartender for your cookies, bro. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, 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 they give the kids on giving. Hey, what the old people say? Let them use you. Let them use you. Hey, man, but oh, when I gave her the package, she was like, hey. These the funny cookies. These the funny cookies. I was like, no, she thought they were, but yeah, man, they enjoyed it, man. They love your cookies, bro. Hey, I appreciate so we, that, bro. Yeah. So yeah, fist stuff for me, bro. All right. I do have a question offline though. Okay. I already know. I know where this is going. So yeah. Yep. Me too. Right, man. Hey, 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 kid. I'm gonna just say yeah. 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 <laughs> That's all you know exactly what I'm about if you ask. Yeah. The answer is yeah, bro. All right, so I'm still going to take this out, though. I didn't want to say it while I was on there. I said, I, 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 I know I was, what you're talking about. The edible. <laughs> I'm still taking this out, though. That's, that's, all you, that's all you need to know. The answer is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you trying to cook it with the nuts in it? They got nuts. <laughs> I told you this was gonna be fun, man. Oh I man, yeah, 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 the cookie each is. one was because see I, this I, is the thing though typically typically i don't even do variety boxes i actually did those for y'all so normally they that just good, one time and i'd had a label on the box of which kind they are there okay. you go yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. that's why i said variety box uh, yeah variety on the box or variety box. yeah 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 so are you, are you working on any new new cookies, bro? What, what you got in the in the? Man, uh... I, be, I be I be throwing new cookies together all the time. That's the beauty in being able to make them for yourself, bro. You can you can make them whenever you want to. You make whatever up you want to, you know. So I just be oh, messing yeah. around with different chocolates and different uh different bars of chocolate, different nice. uh, you know bags of chocolate. So I you know I go through Ghirardelli, Hershey's, Toll House, uh. Right now, I've been using a lot of uh, Ghirardelli bar chocolate, so I'm trying to get more into that. I, I've been I've been seeing the trend go towards more of the super big, you know, chunky. Yeah, the chunky. Uh, yeah, I've been those people. Oh, five dollar a, a, a cookie type situation yeah. with, uh, with crumble cookies and uh, Le'Veon Bakery and some of these other spots. Because um, we got a number of different cookie spots that opened up out here, man. It's um, you know, it's kind of been an explosion of them. So. Um, just trying to, you know, come up with some different stuff, man, that I can keep keep going with the with the trends that's happening at this point. But right. um, staying in my lane at the same time, though, bro, because what I do is what I do, and yep. shit, I feel like ain't nobody doing it like me anyway. So the functionality of being like a, a, an entrepreneur, this is just something just to kind of throw out there in the conversation. But even stuff like that, right? Like I had to get someone to build the site for me because that's not my strength. Right. And the time it would take me to do that on my own versus actually paying some money out to have somebody else do it. You know what I mean? That's that's part of the business relationship, but taking it a step further, I even had to figure out for myself, once the site was built, how do I operate it? Because I can't <laughs> keep reaching out to the person that built it to get everything done on it that I'm gonna need to get done in real time. You know what I mean? So you just even bringing up the fact of throwing this on um, the website, the the fact that I even know how I can do that, you know what I'm saying, is just part of the growth. And mm. when I started this to now where I'm at with it and how much more invested I had to be in my own business to even be able to know how to even do things like you're talking about right now, because it's so many moving parts, man, to just trying to start a business, run it, maintain it and build it and scale it that wow. as the actual um sort of creator you know what i'm saying 
that side of your brain doesn't always connect with what has to be done logistically, business wise, you know, uh, uh, um, technical wise, um, just creating different uh, things that you can use to be able to keep your business moving in the right direction without having to count on so many people to do it for you. Damn, that, damn, that was one of the we discussions. Yeah, I'm gonna say Quick question right off the rip. When did you come up? How'd you come up with the name Thunderbolt? It's um it's actually my grandfather's nickname. Okay. So with him being pretty much my culinary influence, I just, you know, thought it was right to sort of pay homage to my to my family, you know what I mean? To the to the person that kind of kicked it off for us. All right, dope. And it gives my family, it gives my family something to attach themselves to as well because they right. can they can run with that as well and not feel like it's something that's just me, but it's us. I thought it was about the James Bond movie. It's Thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite ones. I thought Big G was about to ask why you didn't go to K-State. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> K-State, could you stay in K-State? Uh, <laughs> what made you choose Tennessee State? Hey. Go to hey. uh, do you have a, uh, with, I saw there's so much nuts and different things in there. Do you have the ability or do you even want to go into the lane of doing a, a hyperallergenic cookie. Like I got a daughter that can't eat nuts, so she can't have none of the cookies. Yeah. Cause I don't know if they're all made at the same time. Yeah, I, well, that's something that I do basically just based on customer by customer. You know, if they let me know that they need, they need something that does not have nuts in it, they'd like to have one of the cookies that are available without nuts. Generally speaking, I can just make that customized for them. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't have any way of kind of knowing that ahead of time, um, but that is something that I'll probably put on the website to to uh, to make a disclaimer of if that is, you know, if they're if they are allergic to nuts, any type of nuts, or anything like that, or any allergies, period, uh, to put it in the notes um, before they actually make the order. But one good thing about that three is if you want to have a dessert that you don't want your kids to touch. But three, I do, I do do just plain chocolate chip joints too. So that's that's for the people. That was one of the switches for the people that that don't eat nuts because a lot of the stuff that I came out when I when I first started was just things that I was trying to do that was different than everybody else that kind of was on the market at that time. So I knew the standard chocolate chip i was trying to i was trying to go away from that you know what i mean because everybody does that so i was trying to do stuff that i could think of that nobody else is really doing but then it got to a point where some uh some of the people not only had nut allergies but they just they just like regular just basic ass chocolate chip cookies so i had to be able to you know to, to have that available for them as well but i mean i've been i've done vegan cookies before man i've done gluten-free i just try to stick to what i do well um right. Because a lot of that other stuff, man, it takes so much out of what kind of, for me, the essence of eating a, a treat is. It's yep. supposed to be a treat. It's supposed to go against necessarily, you know, not the things you're supposed to be eating all the time, but that's what makes it, you know, good at that time. So I try to stay in that lane with it, even though out here, man, there's so many folks that are on that, you know, uh, from from paleo to vegan to, you know, totally plant-based or whatever. And <laughs> they can tell you that them cookies taste good if they want to, but them cookies do not taste the same as when you got butter, <laughs> sugar, yeah. chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? Like, this is they don't, bro. And ain't no replacing that. Ain't no getting around that. We, we yeah. interviewed a young lady that did the whole uh, Pink Bakery. Have you heard of New Ben Simmons, Pink Bakery? No. Nah. Yeah, so New Ben Simmons. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. She Most got a whole vegan brain. We had her on the show. She vegan? Yeah. 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 Look up Pink Bakery whenever you get a okay. chance. She probably makes some phenomenal stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, not to say that, that the vegan well, desserts well, are not good, but if you eat a vegan cookie in comparison to a regular cookie, it, it ain't, it ain't close. Make, it it ain't you, can't, you, you, you can't duplicate butter, dog. It ain't close, bro. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it can <laughs> work. Butter, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. It can work. It can be serviceable. It could be good. You could be like, oh, okay, well, I didn't know I could actually enjoy a vegan cookie, but I can promise you it ain't going to give you the same <laughs> sensation or satiation. You know what I'm saying? Look that word up, fella. Satiation. <laughs> as it is. You're that, that, that butter and that sugar. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> 
That's just uh, you know, hey, man, about, truth, right? that, that's your clip right there. That's the clip right there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is. You ever try to use honey in the dough? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, people use I that. I actually yeah. do. Um, I used to use it in as a as a replacement for the sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, like it works. Thinking. It works, but again, it it ain't the same. You know what I mean? Right, I had right. a, I actually I had a boxer uh, that used to buy uh, cookies from me, and he couldn't he couldn't have all the sugar and stuff in it, but he loved the cookies. So for him, I started doing the honey replacement, and it worked for him. You know what I'm saying for what he was trying to do, but it, I'm I'm positive it wasn't what okay, yeah. Yeah. it's different because I mean, you know that's a it, was, it was one of the, it was one of those things where it's gonna get you through but if you had your choice that wouldn't be your choice yeah <laughs> kind of like zero alcohol beer yes yeah, it's, 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 it, you know <laughs> it's if yeah if your thing is just the act of drinking you know then that might work for you but if you tr- actually trying to get a buzz then obviously you know that ain't gonna do it right Nah, bro. You can't so, like All right, all right, D man. Now we're gonna round it out. We're gonna uh, uh, almost finish it up, but it's the last segment, last real segment, and it, uh, it's this or that. Uh, we're gonna ask you some questions. This or that. You pick which one. Um, it is for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no penalty, but let's have fun with it. You know what all I'm right. saying? Uh, first one is actually a little bit more serious. Cooking, being a chef, or basketball. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Open, man. Open oh, nice. for sure. Nice. Open for sure. Okay. Better be. You still, you still go, go out there and hoop a little bit? Uh not too much, bro. Uh one, I just don't have the time to do it like I like I used to. And two, my body don't recover like it used to. You know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So them uh them 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 couple couple games hooping with the homies turn into two weeks of so feeling like the homies beat you up. <laughs> you ever hit the Drew League out there? Uh, you ever hit the Drew League out there? I checked out the Drew League a few times, man, years ago, bro. But to be honest with you, man, uh, growing up hooping out here, the Drew League, it took on a different light, like, real uh-huh. late, bro. That wasn't actually one of the leagues that that, that had all that uh, the glitz and glamour like it do now. You know what I mean? When I was coming through, there was, there was a number of different leagues. There was – the Sano Classic, you know what I mean, which was a summer uh, kind of not pro league, but it was it was all the, the top high school talent and the college talent that was from L.A. or, or around the L.A. area. Um, that's what you played in. You played AU ball, you know, during the summer and, and a lot of that. That Drew League kind of was more um, really just a league that was on the east side, bro, um, that started to take on a different light once a lot of the cats that kind of from that side of town start making it to the NBA. And that was a league that they kind of grew up playing in or whatnot. So once they made it to the league, you know, they brought that they brought that light back down to to the league with them, and it just took off from there. So, yeah. Well, keeping with the basketball thing, Kobe or LeBron? Kobe. Uh, I knew the answer. Let's right, not but, be let's not be disrespectful out here. Okay, okay, <laughs> but all right, listen, listen. That one, that one leads into this one. Yeah. So, um, Kobe or MJ? MJ. Okay. And I'm I just wanted to say, say what did you say? What? I'm about to say, you got a big MJ. I you mean, you got a big the sensei, bro. You got a big yeah. the sensei first, man. Yeah. Hey, man. You know what I mean? From LA, didn't I? Didn't know. Yeah, but, but, but even, but even Kobe had to, you know yeah. what I mean? Get yeah. what he got from, from, from the sensei, you know well, what I mean? He was number 24. Huh? He wore, he, he wore the number twenty four because he wore. Well, the I mean, you know, the one thing you gotta the one thing you gotta respect about Kobe is no matter what, you know, you feel about him, bro. He was he was committed to being the best. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and you gotta find you gotta find some some admiration in that. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people did towards the end of his career because they they understood better why he kind of moved the way he moved, you know what I mean? Because he 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 took it that serious, bro, of being the best that he could be at what he was doing. And, you know, like I said, it's a lot to admire in that, bro. So I, I love Kobe, you know, like any other L.A. dude, man, and, and respect the hell out of what he brought um, to the table for us. But in, in respect to just who I grew up, you know, idolizing from the hoop side, it was it was Mike, you know what I'm saying? That was the guy during our time, mm-hmm. during our time, that that set the trends and made you know hooping uh, a, a dream for for us cats that was doing it. You know what I mean. And ultimately, you know, I think 
Kobe uh, came from from basically Mike. I think LeBron came from Mike. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot of um, sort of his 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 legacy within them. You know what I mean? And and kind of how they approach the game and how they play. And so I think you gotta you gotta start there. You got dudes who ain't never seen him play fighting over his shoes. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, bro, we, we know, we know we saw it and we understand what, what he meant, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? To not only basketball, but just to the influence on young kids just out here, man, just trying to be great at whatever they was in, you know, being a Michael Jordan of whatever your, you know, industry is or your, your sport Mm -hmm. or whatever. That's the, that's the highest honor you can get. True. You know what I mean? Like, Nobody's saying he's a LeBron of this or they are the LeBron of that. It's like you either the mic of it or you just you another dude. And you mm-hmm. had folks wearing number 23 on jerseys outside of basketball. I remember I had yeah, they, were, they retired that man, they retired that man's jersey in a visiting team's arena. <laughs> His jersey retired in Miami, bro. Yep. Now that's I mean, I don't I, I don't know. How how to even put that into words, man? Were you so good? They retired your jersey in another team's arena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nobody gonna have twenty three coming up. Come here. on, man! And D ain't even play for the Heat. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> hey, they just don't want no smoke from him no more. <laughs> I'm glad he retired. <laughs> so even even um even staying in that lane, um, thanks, Carolina. Kareem uh, Shaq. Kareem or Shaq? Yeah. I'm gonna go Cap. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna go Cap. You call Cap? Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, right. and, and and reason being, I mean, if you you know, if you if you really look at it historically, man, he's he's his career has like been like no other. Yeah. You know, and that's that's all the way from, from high school up. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. he's 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 dominated every level that he played on, bro. Like his teams ain't lose, but his teams had like football. Team records, bro. Oh, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 got, they got one and two losses, bro. They they fifty something and two in his college career. You know what I mean? Like, nice. Their numbers is crazy, undefeated. bro. Didn't they change? Yeah, the that's what I'm saying. They had to lose. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't even let they him dunk. dunk they, yeah, they, they wouldn't even let him dunk. So just imagine if they was if they was letting him dunk. Mm. That's why he had. To, that's why he had to learn to shoot the hook. You know, and and that's factual, bro. You look at he 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 came in the league, he dominated. He he, he I think what Milwaukee got their first championship with him and, yep. and Big O. Yep. Then he go to the Lakers and you know get FOMO. You know what I'm saying? And wow, he played till he was what uh-huh. under forty, if not forty. He's you know what I mean? And and LeBron had to come in dumb early and play super crazy to even be close to catching this man. Yeah. For twenty and years. Crazy about and the crazy about um Cap, he wasn't a big dude like Shaq. No, mm-hmm. no, no. Mm-hmm. But just just skill, bro. Just you know, just the man was the man was skilled, bro. And and he don't get the credit that I think he's due, just because again, time moves on and the youngsters don't really, you know, at, at least at least to, awesome. to my mind, they don't really look back that far, man, to really you know see kind of where. Where well, all this came from, so they only see kind of from the Kobe up, and that's all they really respect and know uh, about, and they don't really understand. Like it's so many of these 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 older elder cats, man, that just was crazy good back in their day, bro. You know what I mean? Like they numbers mm-hmm. after they numbers wasn't even kept. You know what I mean? And, uh, and the numbers are still crazy. So you know, we we I just think I think we come I think we come from the last generation. Well, I know we come from the last generation, bro. That's like it's the it's the it's the transition generation, so to speak, because we got all the stuff that the the elders kind of had in their time, and then we ushered in all the new stuff that our kids have now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we're the only generation that can actually speak from both sides of the coin, <laughs> respectively, because we're the only generation that 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 was, you know, here during that during that transition period. Don't talk to me if you don't know AC Green, fool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you finally get some? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank no you. woman knows AC Green. <laughs> no, all the dudes know AC. No woman knows it. <laughs> hey, so I look. think that's big. I think that's big cap. That's probably <laughs> the biggest cap in Laker history, bro. I think so, so too. AC, uh, wasn't, 
And they see what's hit by during them yeah. championship years. That's a, that's yeah. a whole other topic, to be you honest with you. I'm going to have a whole other topic about just yeah. that. Bro. Yeah. 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 AC gets some during the championship years. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Look, so they, speaking of his years, 87 Lakers or 01 Lakers? 87 Lakers. Why? Because they, 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 they brought the feeling to the city. Okay. We, we was basketball during that time. You know what I mean? Like, not even just on the fact that we was winning championships, but it was just like the 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 aura around the Lakers, bro, was was different. You know what I mean? So I magic. You mention magic. Yeah. Okay. You just yeah, said it. Magic was magic was magic was. It still is. He still is mayor of the city, bro. You know what I mean? Like, magic is. We adopted magic basically. He won ours, so we don't even look at him like he's from Michigan. Nobody does. <laughs> no one, no one does. Yeah. Nobody does. True. He is, he's, he's true. a LA dude, man. You know what I mean? And during that time, bro, that was like that was the that was the vibe, bro. That was the energy through through the city was the was the Lakers, bro. To see a game at the forum, you know, uh was was epic, bro. Like the the it's it's hard to even put it in word, man, because it was during a time where it was so much like kind of taken off out here with Hollywood and movies and you know, it becoming the star capital and all of that. It was like everybody was out here and everybody came out here to see the Lakers, bro. And if you got a chance to go see them, it was that was Christmas, man. So you must be a fan of the winning time on HBO. Absolutely. I think yeah. that's one of the best shows they put out, bro. You know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I know a lot of it is real. You know what I'm saying? I know some of it's cap, but I know enough of it is real to where they was able to put that together in a way that it was compelling and people would watch it. And, kind of. and just like I said, just growing up out here, man, during that time, you you know some of that stuff that they was talking about is dead yeah. ass. You know, like, ain't, ain't no doubt about it. Uh, the way a uh, 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 bus was moving around, you know, like this this is all little things that you you would hear about, but you know, you 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 really don't know nothing about that life or what's going on on that side of the town. So for them to kind of capture that and, and give you little bits and pieces, a little insight of what was happening during that time from the, the inner workings of it, I, I make it cool as hell to watch. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Those Laker so, girls, too. What'd you say, Scott? So they introduced those Laker girls, too. Yes, sir. Pa yeah. Paula yeah. Abdul. Paula to. Abdul, bro. We And they don't, they don't, you know, <laughs> she, she an old head, but she was, she was, she was hot in her time. Oh, you know what I mean? It's, she, was, she was beautiful. She was the original Laker girl. You feel yeah. me? Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, all right. we can't. Wait, uh, I, had, I had one, but go ahead. Go ahead, three. I'm sorry. I right, put these in order because we got. We probably never have another LA cat on the show. Put these in order for me. You ready? Yep. Kendrick, Snoop, Nipsey, Dre, Game. Uh, Snoop one, Kendrick two, Dre three, Game four, Nipsey five. Thanks. Okay, respect it. I respect it. Look, and that one song got me double up. Oh, hey, but see, this is the thing. This is the thing with Nip. Like his the the love that people have for Nip, man, goes deeper than the music. You know what I mean? So his respect comes from much more than just like honestly the, the albums. Like, cause he really, you know, retrospect, we got all the mixtapes and all that out here or whatnot. And some some people got them elsewhere or whatnot. But the the victory lap is what really was gonna be the first of so many more albums yeah. for people to hear. Yeah, yeah, they really was, didn't get a chance to get the full, the full nip energy. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that was a, that was the first one. That was the first <laughs> one that was done by a major by a major yeah, label. Yeah. And everything yeah. else that y'all was hearing from him was shit that he was putting together himself. You know, so it's it's kind of hard to put him up with those other four because those other four got got major, you know, label deals, airplay, all of that time spent on you know being able to, to 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 put out multiple albums and all that so the you know the vastness of what they've done in comparison to him um is completely different but the impact that he had on the city um i would say is probably more than any of them yeah we was out there one so I, time. I would put him at the top when it comes to impact but when it comes to music i would i would put the list that i that i just gave y'all 
Yeah. Um, me, Scott, and Greg uh, went out there right after he passed. Right. Yeah. We went out to a club that first night, and they played "Fuck Trump." Yeah. And that whole place went went crazy, wow. didn't it? Crazy. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that night, man. Because he was on he was on fire, bro. Which was which was the probably the saddest part about it. Like he was on fire at that time, bro. Like he really yeah. had the city in a chokehold, man. Everything he was dropping was was spinning crazy. Um, the, the the videos, everything. Like you could just you could just feel the 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 momentum change for what what he had going on. You know what I mean? And you saw cats like Puff and Jay and all these dudes starting to really embrace him and bring him into that loop. You know what I mean? So it was like, damn, bro, he's been fighting this whole time to get to this point. And as soon as he get to this point, he get knocked down by some nigga from his own hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. like, damn, bro, that's that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because it it it, it be like that out here, honestly. Right. I mean, sure like a lot of places, but it really do be like that out here, man. Like right before you see somebody really kind of turn that corner, it seemed like some shit always go down. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I think that's what hurt people the most, man, because they saw it. They saw him turn in that corner. Lucy said, you killing your own hood. You killing your yeah. own city, rappers. They I mean, literally, though, that. like, it, this, this wasn't even no, this wasn't even no, like, this was literally in his own hood, bro. This is in front yeah. of his store. You yeah. know what I mean? So if any place you would feel like you, you probably safe. It's right there, and if and 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 for y'all that been out here, if you've been by the store, you see how it's set up. It's like it's 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 out in the open, bro. Every, every, what 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 happened there, bro, wouldn't generally happen right there. You know what I'm saying? Even with it being a tough neighborhood, because mm -hmm. it's just out in the open, and it's kind of an area that people don't really um they don't really keep that type of energy right there. You know what I'm saying? Ever since Nip took it over, it's become kind of the hot spot for people to come hang out. You know, you'll catch celebrities up there or, or whatever, bro, at this spot. And this is this right in the hood. This off Slauson and Crenshaw. You know what I mean? Like the gas station next door to it that y'all see all the time in the videos and all that. A nigga might get popped right there. You know what I mean? But generally <laughs> speaking, in that little that little nook right there that they had, they 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 had they had the respect of the hood, bro. But obviously, you know, that that only goes so far. Everybody don't respect you in the hood. So yep. So following up on, on the music on the music tip, um Easy E or Tupac. Gotta uh, be got oh you said pop. Yeah. I thought All you would say easy E. See, that's another one, man. Like Pac is another one that put on for the city. You know what I mean? And even though again he's not from here, we claim him, bro. You know what I mean? Everybody know he's from New York. You know what I'm saying he was born in I believe he's Baltimore. Born in, Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore actually, yeah, Baltimore actually, but actually from Oakland. raised in New York. They grew up in Oakland. Then, moved Oakland. To Oakland, yeah. then came to LA, you know what I'm saying? After the, the jail beat it. But he he's always rep for Cali, you know what I'm saying? And especially LA, you know what I mean? So once he really put on for us, bro, we just we we took him as ours. So Pac, you know, easy is 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 always gonna be respected for being a pioneer. You know what I mean? Obviously, NWA is, is our sort of um stamp on on the rap game as far as when we decided to to, to get involved with it, the West Coast or whatnot. Um, so easy is always going to get the respect on that. You know what I mean? Being one of the pioneers on that. Um, but as far as music, he can't, he can't even compete with Pac's music. So I got out oh, music. All right. Dre or quick. Damn. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Um, Mm. That's Quick a good one. Name. That was my that's favorite a good speed, one. God. That's a very that's a very good one, bro. Um I might have to go with quick, man. Mm. I might have to go with quick. And reason being is because music. One, Dre, Dre, Dre is known more for his production work and then obviously the chronic chronic 2001. Um, but those are really his only albums. I one of the first tapes that i ever had was dj quick yep and it, nice. it was it was it was the joint with sweet black pussy on it i was one of the first joints that quick I is had. the name that's yeah the second album, the man. that's the second album. yeah that's the second album. yeah 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 yep yep album. yep and uh and bro i probably had every quick album from that point till maybe like the the later ones you know what i'm saying like the, the late 2000 ones or whatnot 
But up to that point, I, I bought every DJ Quick album, played the hell out them joints. And it's probably one of the most slept on artists from out here. Yeah, um, I love also, it. People, people sleep on him because he he does a lot of production that we don't even know about, like R and B. I know he did some for Tony, Tony, Tony. He back does, back. but he has a he has a number of albums that just yeah. don't get outside of California. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. So they don't they don't they don't translate out to the south. They don't translate to the east coast. But throughout Cali, like we'll have so much stuff that's done by Quick um, that he, he he bro he he don't really even have to go outside of Cali. You know what I'm saying to, to get the the love that. I guess he would he would need or 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 deem respectable, even though he should have it because he's done hell, he's done production for fucking eight ball and MJG. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh I forgot the name of the song, but it was it's one of they it's one of they popular songs, bro. And it was something that you would have never expected for them to put that together. But quick the 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 music person that he is doesn't doesn't get enough credit. Like dude plays all types of instruments. Um like he's like a he's like honestly he's like a R. Kelly kind of dude of hip hop where he just he just does everything you know what I mean but because he doesn't work with you know the the Fifty Cent or whoever whoever you want to name that that Dre works with you know what I mean he doesn't necessarily get the same uh, respect if you look at some of Pac's albums some of the hardest joints on Pac's albums is DJ Quick produced. That's it. Up. Okay, I'm, I'm getting tired, but if you had to have one ruin your life, if somebody had to pick one to ruin your life, Robin Gibbons, Halle Berry, or Kardashian? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Kardashian because they got bread. <laughs> so they could, you know, you could, you, could get, you could get ruined and still get some bread out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you might build a career off of getting ruined by them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, the real the realest question I had on here was whose curl was better, Ice Cube or Baron Davis? Uh, it gotta be Cube. Gotta be Cube. Cube had the original real joint. Baron's was I don't even understand what Baron was doing to be honest with you, bro. Like that's the homie, but I don't know what he was doing um, with that that situation. And it wasn't it wasn't even like fully curl. You know what I mean? Because the whole process of the curl, bro, like the people for people that don't even know, because I remember, even though I never had one, I remember seeing my brother and some of my family members get that done. You had to get your hair pressed out and all types of stuff, bro, before it even got to the point of being curled up and, and oh, whipped up. Had like that. Curl yeah, no, you had that. Yeah, this was this was the curl curl, bro. This was the one where you had to have a shower cap. You had to have the, the, the TCP, <laughs> yeah. World of Curls. You know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had all these products, bro, to put in there to keep it looking moist and, and, and juiced up. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then you just, you couldn't sleep or you couldn't lay on people's couch and all that. Like, you really had to, you know, yeah. be respectful of where you was at with that curl, bro, because it was it was going to be more than just you and and and, and that curl juice on, on, on people's stuff. Did you yeah, have, a nice did you have a curl or a perm? DJ Quick uh, had both. They, Quick had both. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, it yeah, starts both. from that perm. Yeah. Okay. They got it. They got it. They got a. They got a hot comb it out and all that, and then it's a whole little process <laughs> from there before it rolls into the curl, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, fortunately for me, I caught the S curl phase. You know what I'm saying? So that was a little different. But that curl, curl, that's about four, five hours in the chair before you even done, bro. <laughs> I'll bring that black history in. So they got ahead of you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Madam <laughs> CJ yeah, walk yeah, over that, to the West Coast. There's one trend. <laughs> trend. You don't need to make a comeback. Hey, I'm saying Murray. <laughs> Murray and you had to have some Murrays. You had to have some World of Curls. TCB. Yep. Uh, and then you had to have that white bottle of Super Grow. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. that's when moms would part your hair down, put that Super Grow down there. You know what I'm saying? And get it get it right so your joint to come out real nice and, and natural. You know what I'm saying? Curl, get off my phone. Let me get, get off my phone. <laughs> AD, here's yeah. my, um, TSU homecoming or a family reunion? TSU homecoming. It is a family reunion. It is. You know, true, true. It is a family reunion. You'll be sick when you don't go. Yeah, like, true. you know you missing something. Yeah, you true. know it. It might not be a lot, but you know you missing something, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I respect that. And really, I'm grateful to it, man, because, like I said, coming from where I'm from, it ain't it ain't a lot of cats that would have went to Nashville, bro, to go to school. 
You know right. what I mean? But I, I, I'm blessed that I did make that decision, man, because the, the people that I met, Doug, I've, I've met so many people that have become integral part of my life, um, my adulthood um, life, uh, all from TSU, bro. You know, nice. and it would have never happened if I hadn't come down there. Uh, I know people in so many different places because of TSU. Uh, I feel like I can travel a lot of this country, bro. And I got, got somebody you, to reach out to. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, that's my people. You know what I mean? That I have a background with, that I have some some foundation with. And that's all based on TSU, bro. So, like when, when I hopped off the chapter. plane, like when I hopped uh, off the plane for, uh, what did I tell you? I had an hour and a half. But uh, come on. You feel what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's those type, it's those type of relationships, bro. That I'm saying it's like that's 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 the beauty of our um our time there, our connections there. Cause we we all know every every one of us that went there know that it's so much bullshit that you gotta get through to get up out that school. You know what I'm saying? That that builds a lot of character into who you are at this point in life, bro. Because a lot you, of you, you deal with a lot, you deal with a lot to get out of there, but the things that you remember are so cool because you have so many good times there, man. The mm -hmm. people you meet, the people you get close to, the, the stuff y'all did, the stuff y'all can't talk about. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> those those things, man. I tell people all the time, man, it's like that that experience is like no other because what other place could I have moved to where or even lived where I got four chicks that stay downstairs, four chicks that stay upstairs, four chicks that stay to the left of me, four chicks that stay to the right of me. In an apartment complex, and that still ain't thirty. And that ain't even right. You know what I'm saying? And that's just in my little block of the apartment complex, bro. You know what I'm saying? So not to even mention all the other stuff that we did, but just in general, as us being young dudes, who, who, what, what apartment complex can you move to where they where they got that popping like that? You can't, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on the yard to get that type of energy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So on top of that, me being from LA, where I come from, a a mixed up culture of people out here, bro. A gumbo pot of folks, every nationality you could probably think of, every mix up you could think of, to pretty much just black folks, my folks, my energy, you know what I'm saying? The the, the things that we are into, like that was that was that was a necessary thing for me, bro. Like that that gave me so much clarity on things that I didn't know nothing about because I was just used to being, you know, in LA and what LA offered and how it is to move around in LA. Like Living in Nashville gave me time to actually see some stuff that I wasn't able to see out here because you're moving 100 miles an hour out here, man. You know yeah. what I mean? And I tell people that all the time. When you when you leave this is when you actually get a chance to either appreciate it or see how much you was missing, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't get a chance when you're in it to kind of understand that. But moving out there gave me a chance to really be like, damn, bro, there's some other things out here that I like. You know what I'm saying? There's some other ways of living that, that are, are comfortable. I don't have to necessarily be stuck in the way that I that I grew up you know what I'm saying because that's all I saw that's all I knew so that's the only way I knew how to operate but well my brother that is the end of this or that um and you know and basically that brings us to the end of the episode so um at the end of every episode we like to ask our guests or you know if there's no guests for the day for that episode one of us will do it we'd like to ask you to uh leave us with some words of wisdom. Oh man, some words of wisdom, man. Um, I think the best thing I can say in these times, man, is um, you know, be grateful for, be grateful for what you have, um, but be working towards getting more. Mm. Um, I think with COVID and 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 everything that's happened since then, man, the the, the the gratitude we have to have, man, just for being here, um, for being uh, amongst family, amongst friends, for having the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, to have this 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 Zoom meeting, man, this 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 opportunity to to speak with each other, bro. I think that's um, something we have to really embrace, man, because there's so many folks that's passing, um, mm -hmm. and 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 it's it's like it ain't really no rhyme or reason to it, bro. But I just realized that we in that space in life where you gotta. You know, you got to really start appreciating um, the people around you while they're here because we we just we don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? And even having this conversation with y'all, uh, you know, what I'm saying, God forbid, man, that anything happens to any of us. But we can't we can't say that it won't. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One of us might go to sleep tonight and not get up tomorrow. And the last thing we have is this conversation that we had tonight. You know what I mean? So That's I'm right. learning to be more present. And I would I would I would strongly recommend to my brothers that that we as a group work on being more present for our families, for our friends, um, those that we consider close to us, man, and just being um, you know, in in the space where where we we taking advantage of right now. You know what I'm saying yes, we're not we're not expecting to, to have tomorrow, so we we making the most of what we have right now. So that's that's what I will leave with us, fellas. Hey, that's that's good. Good. That's hey, hey Wes, Wes, I forgive you for being you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't accept your apology, but thank you. <laughs> so, be me, yeah. <laughs> man, uh, D, I just want to thank you again for being on the show, for taking time out of your day, um, taking uh, time away from your family, from your business, uh, to sit down, just have a, um, a good conversation about uh, the, what you do and the things that are important to you, man, and sharing this love, sharing this knowledge, sharing this other option in life for anybody who's an entrepreneur and you're looking for something else that you uh might want to do you got our, you already got people out here like darnay thomas laying the groundwork and doing it. it you know he's doing it you can doing it but you just gotta get your little hustle and grind on man and get to it absolutely that's it absolutely i All appreciate right. it d, d before we leave um hit us uh hit the folks with your social media contacts website any of that how do they get in contact with you if they want if they're interested in booking you Man, if you're interested in booking me, you can email me at chefdarnaylarue at gmail.com. That's D-A-R-N-A-I-L-A-R-U-E, chefdarnaylarue at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at chefdarnaylarue. Um, and those are really just the main two contacts, man. You can get the cookies from uh, thunderboltcookie.com. Menus up, everything on there that you need to order. And uh, man, if you guys have any questions about anything, any products that I sell, any services I provide, feel free to email me, man. I definitely, you know, check my emails every day. So I'm usually in touch within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. I appreciate that. Now, you know, just like he gave you his, Scott Jones, lead the people one more time with yes, sir. Our, our contacts. As we said at the beginning, if you j- like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to watch more of these. Yes, sir. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Instagram, TikTok at the Urban Retrospect. Catch us on Twitter at Retrospect1619. If you want us to review your product, highlight your product, or if you have any questions for us, shoot us an email at theurbanretrospect at gmail.com. And then lastly, to catch everything, look straight ahead at that, the Urban Retrospect dot com yes sir gb was so appreciate that here we go all right man and as we leave we leave you every week with peace love and retrospect y'all take it easy